Welcome to part 2 of 5 for the series on the Active Directory Project 2.0. If you haven't seen part 1, where we go over how to build out a diagram for this particular project, I would highly recommend that you go and watch that first, as I will be referencing that diagram throughout this 5 part series. Today, our objective is to install 3 virtual machines up in the cloud using Vulture, and making sure that they can communicate with each other. By the end of this video, you should have 2 Windows Server, where one will act as our domain controller and the other one as our test machine, and one Ubuntu server to act as our Splunk server. Again, you can use a $300 credit if you sign up using the link down below, but do note that you will need a valid credit card and that this only applies for new users. Also, as a reminder, I am in the middle of creating another 30 day SOC analyst challenge. So if you're interested, you can sign up for the waitlist by heading over to mydefer.com slash challenge or click on the link down below. Let's get started. To get started, you wanna head over to vulture.com and sign up for an account if you haven't done so already. Now, if you do choose to sign up using the link that I provide in the description down below, you do get a $300 credit if you are a new user and have linked a valid credit card. In the past, I did see some comments where some had some difficulties obtaining the $300 credit, which is why I'll walk you through on the process of how to get it. Under the first tab, I do have my reference code, which is right here at the top. When you click on the link, it will bring you over to vulture.com. From here, you don't want to move anywhere else. You can simply hit sign up. And from here, you can start creating your account. Once you created your account, you will then see a $300 free credit on the right hand side. Now it does say we need to verify your identity to protect our users. So please link a payment method for verification. This is why you need a valid credit card so you can link that over to your account. But do make sure that you check, I just want to link my credit card, $0 deposit. Now you might get presented with errors saying that you must deposit $5. If that is the case, you have a couple of options. You can either deposit $5 or you can try another credit card. Once you've linked your credit card, you wanna head over to products and make sure you're under compute and then click on deploy server. And this right here is Vulture's new layout. On the right, there is a option to switch back to the old experience for a limited time. But because it is very likely Vulture is going to be using this interface going forward, I am going to complete this project using this interface. On the left hand side under choose type, we want to select shared CPU. And for our location, select the one that is closest to you. For me, I am going to filter on Americas and I will select Toronto. Scrolling down, we can then choose our specs. Now, because we are building three virtual machines, one is going to be our Windows Server domain controller that is going to host Active Directory. The other is going to be our Splunk server. And the last one is going to be our test machine. For our domain controller, we don't really need this virtual machine to be super beefy. So I am going to select something like this right here. Two virtual CPUs, four gigs, and 80 gigs of disk space. This particular spec is going to cost me $20 a month. Clicking on our software, I am going to select Windows Standard 2022. And here we can select our SSH keys, startup script, and even our firewall group. But I am going to leave this as blank for now. For the server hostname, I am going to name it as mydfir-addc01, short for Active Directory Domain Controller 01. For the automatic backups, let's go ahead and disable this. I don't really need it. And I think that's about it. And the total price is going to cost us about $52 a month. And majority of that is because of our Windows licensing fee. By installing Windows, it costs an additional $32 a month. But with the $300 credit, it should be enough to complete this project. Taking one last look to make sure our configuration is good. Looks to be good. So let's go ahead and hit deploy. While our new virtual machine is doing its thing, let's go and install our two remaining servers. Click on deploy. Again, shared CPU. Let's make sure we select Toronto. And this is going to be our test machine. So this, we don't really need it to be super crazy as well. And actually, I'm just going to use one virtual CPU and two gigs of RAM with 55 gigs of disk space. Click on configure software and I will use Windows standard again. Let's do 2022, disable automatic backup, and we'll keep this as is. Click on deploy. Now I didn't change a host name, but that's okay. Let's do our last one. 
which is going to be our Splunk machine. This one, it needs to be a little bit more beefy. So instead of four gigs of RAM, I am going to go for eight gigs. So this one right here, four virtual CPUs, eight gigs of RAM and 160 gigs of disk space. We are not going to select Windows anymore. We are going to select Ubuntu and I'm going to choose 22.04. Leave everything blank. For the host name, I am going to say my DFIR-Splunk. Disable the automatic backup and I think we are good here. Perfect. Let's hit deploy. And now we got our three virtual machines created. To do this, you want to head over to network at the left hand side, click on firewall and add firewall group. For the description, let's say my DFIR AD-project-2.0 and add firewall group. By default, there is one rule that is automatically created for you, and that is accepting SSH connections from anywhere. Now, I don't like this because it is open to anywhere. So instead, let's restrict this so only we can access our own machines. To do this, you want to click on the drop down and click on my IP. Automatically, your public IP address should be updated here. If you are curious and you want to know how to get your public IP address, you can type in what is my IP and click on the first link. I am also going to add another rule by clicking on the plus button. And this rule is going to accept RDP inbound from our machine. So I'll click on MS RDP as the protocol and it will default to the port of 3389. The source, again, I am going to select my IP and hit the plus button. And now that I have my firewall rules in place, let's go back over to our virtual machines and see if that's done configuring. I do want to note the IP addresses of all of my machines here. I am going to open up Notepad and paste that in. So this one IP is my Splunk. Paste in the Active Directory IP. This is ADDC01. And finally, let's do the test machine. I'll say test machine. Now, the reason why I am taking down these IP addresses is just in case I need it for configuration purposes down the road. Taking a look under the status, these are all in the running state. So let's start with our Active Directory virtual machine. From here, we got our username and the password itself. And we can access this a couple ways here. We can open up our console by clicking on this monitor icon, or we can open up remote desktop on our laptop. For example, on my Windows machine, I can search up remote desktop connection. And then from here, I could connect to my Active Directory domain controller virtual machine hosted in Vulture. Do this by clicking on the copy IP address and paste it in here. Type in administrator. And for the password, go ahead and copy the password and paste it in there. Now it's saying, hey, do you want to connect? Yes, I do. And there you go. This is our domain controller or soon to be domain controller. Let's open up command prompt and I'll type in IP config. So we do have our IP address right here. Go ahead and minimize that and let's add on our firewall. To do that, we can click on settings, click on firewall and under our dropdown, select the my defer AD project 2.0 firewall and update firewall group. Now that this firewall has been added onto our virtual machine, nobody can connect to our virtual machine except for me. Next, let's head over to our other virtual machines and let's do our test machine. So instead of me performing a remote desktop on my laptop, let's take a look at how this looks like on a console. So if I click on the console, this is what I see. I am going to click on this play button here. This will show me the controls that I can use. Because if you take a look, it says control alt delete to unlock. And to do that, you can click on the show extra keys and click on the one at the bottom, which says send control alt delete. And from here, you can't really paste in the password. Instead, you have to click on this clipboard and then paste in your password. Once you click on paste, the password should then be in here. And this is our test machine. So let's open up command prompt similar to what we did before. And I'll type in IP config we get our IP address right here. Now you can use either way you want. You can use the console or you can do it via remote desktop. For me personally, I prefer remote desktop because it's a lot easier to control. And now that I think about it, I want to do an additional configuration. If we click on settings, I do not have what is called a VPC network, AKA a virtual private cloud. What I'll do actually is click on enable VPC 
Go ahead and enable that. And while we're here, let's go and select my firewall, select the My Defer AD Project 2.0, and head back over to my IPv4 settings. Now, if you take a look, our VPC network now has an IP address of 10.22.96.3. Let's keep a note of that and let's put that in here. This is my test machine. We have a public IP and now we have a private IP. The reason why I want a VPC network is so that all of my virtual machines within the same VPC can communicate with each other internally. Go back to my Active Directory domain controller, settings, and do the same. Enable VPC. And this one has a dot four. If you recall, my test machine was dot three. ADDC01. Perfect. One thing to keep in mind is that VPC will only work within the same region as your virtual machines. Meaning that if you were to create a virtual machine in Toronto and you create a virtual machine in New York, then those VPCs, they won't be in the same network. Just keep that in mind. The last one to configure is our Splunk machine. Similar to the previous two virtual machines, we can configure this a couple ways. We could use the console or we can open up PowerShell and SSH directly into that virtual machine. And that is what I am going to do because this is a lot easier. I'll type in SSH, the username, which is root. How do I know that? Well, I can take a look right here. It says username is root and the password, go ahead and copy it. Going back over to my PowerShell, I am going to say SSH username, which is root at my public IP address for my Splunk machine, which is 216.128.183.94. And if I hit enter, it will say, hey, are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I do. And finally, it'll ask me for the password. Simply right click and hit enter. And now we've SSH'd into our Ubuntu virtual machine server. If I type in IPA, I should see an IP address here, which is right there. And let's minimize my PowerShell, head over to my settings and enable VPC. Our IP of choice is .5. Paste that in here, and this is going to be Splunk. Next is add my firewall in so nobody can access it except for me. And if I go back over to my SSH session, I should be disconnected. Yes, that is because we enabled VPC and the server had to restart. I can simply hit the up arrow key just to SSH again, and I need my password. All right, now that we're in, type in IP space A, and we do get another network interface with an IP address of 10.22.96.5. So the last thing to check here is our connectivity. Let's go ahead and ping our test server, which is 10.22.96.3. Moment of truth. And we get a destination host unreachable. Hmm. What about dot four? Same thing. Okay. Troubleshooting time. Let's minimize that. Head over to our test machine. And I will copy the IP address because what I'll do is remote desktop in and type in the username and paste in the password. Click on yes. Let's find out why I am getting destination host unreachable. Let's open up a command prompt and type in IP config. Ooh, okay, so that's why. So we have our first interface, our network interface, which is our public IP. Our second network interface is a 169 address. It's not 10 dot whatever dot three. On the bottom right hand corner beside the volume icon, you'll see this monitor looking icon. Go ahead and highlight over that and right click. Click on open network and internet settings and then click on change adapter options. The one that we want to change is this ethernet interface 02. How do I know that? If we go back over to my command prompt, you can see that the ethernet adapter interface 02 is the one that has the 169 address. So the ethernet instance 02 is the one we want to change. Select it and right click properties, double click the internet protocol version four, and we are not going to select obtain an IP address automatically. Instead, I am going to select use the following IP address. And for our IP address, subnet mask and default gateway, we could grab this from our Vulture configuration. Click on settings and looking at our VPC network, our subnet mask is 255.255.240. Going over to my IP address, 10.22.96.3. Subnet mask is 255.255.240. For the default gateway, I am going to just leave this as blank. 
and also the preferred DNS server for now. Hit OK. OK. Going back over to our command prompt, let's type in ipconfig, and now our IP address should change. I am going to minimize my remote desktop session and go back over to our SSH session, clear up the screen, and let's try pinging this one more time, 22.96.3. Perfect, so this works. That means connectivity towards my Splunk server and my test server or test machine is good to go. Now let's do the same for our Active Directory machine. Open up remote desktop and paste in the password. Again, if we open up command prompt and type in ipconfig, we get the same result. We get a 169 under the ethernet adapter 02. So let's open up our networking settings, change adapters, right click the ethernet instance 02, properties, double click internet protocol version 4, and use a static IP address, which is 10.22.96.4. And our subnet mask was 255.255.240. Hit OK. OK. And rather than me going over to my Splunk machine, let's just try pinging it here. So I'll ping 10.22.96.5. And we're getting a connection. Let's do it for our test machine. And we're getting a connection. Perfect. So now I know all of my machines are connected and talking to one another. We should now have a total of three virtual machines up and running. And in part three, we will start to install Active Directory onto one of our Windows servers and promote it to a domain controller. That is it for the video, and I hope that this has been helpful for you so far. If you stumbled across any errors along the way, leave it in the comment section down below. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.